Hello, welcome to Orphan Espresso. I'm Doug. I'm Barb. And uh, this series of videos will be called So You Got a Used Bromina. Uh, it's a very common occurrence. Uh, a, uh, an Olympia Bromina uh, changes hands, is shipped through whatever a carrier. And you receive your machine, you're very excited to, to have it, and then you say, Oh my God, what have I done? What am I going to do? What next? What now? This is a case study of just such a process. Um, this machine, uh, first, the format of this, as you see, is very casual. Uh, YouTube gives us 15 minutes per video. Uh, I'm going to start in the beginning and go completely through the process of confronting problems, solving problems, repairing the machine, and making it as good as possible for a machine that in this case is 1976, what would that be, Bart? Uh, uh, d d d d 34 years old? Okay, older than me, let's put it that way. So, <coughs> the process is we start, we take the machine out of the box, and we look at it, and we feel a little disappointed because the seller didn't pack it well. This is the box that it came in. This is the packing materials that was between the outer box and the inner box. So a few got deflated, and that's the detail. Now, here's some more of the quality packing materials. The box itself is used and wouldn't support much more than a, well, how many wet noodles? Do you think Maybe about five. About five wet noodles. Okay, interestingly enough, this is the original box. And uh, I don't think it was intended to be uh, a shipping box, but just as they do today, they had their system to hold the machine. The original instructions down here. This contained all of the outboards and the, the, the lever and the filter and everything were nicely stuffed in here. But the box really didn't give enough support, uh, particularly with no other packing, to prevent what we very, very commonly see as a compression occurrence. Don't you generally think it's caused by compression, this type of situation? Yeah, it's generally a drop. Okay, so I take the machine out of the original box, and of course that's a valuable little item in itself, but let's see what we've got. Okay, the first thing we want to do is look over the machine and evaluate it. Very nice. Nice and shiny. This Dishwasher. Dishwasher. Okay. See the difference between those two? Throw your portafilter and handle in the dishwasher, and that's what you get. This, not this rough surface. Some of that can be taken care of with semi-chrome polish. It can be But helped. not all of it. A new handle would, be, would make it perfect. But yes. There's the dishwasher. Okay. Two baskets. That's nice. You just take this and you look through it, and yeah, there's about 10% of them are plugged up. This goes into Joe Glow for a good long soak. This one has about 10 of them that are plugged up as well. So that's down the road. This is just the evaluation. Now, what has happened here is the machine had been dropped during shipment. The, bat, the outer case has been pushed forward. As you can see, these gaps, loss of paint here, a little loss of paint there, and there's actually right there, there's the paint chip laying right there. Okay, so these are the first things you do. A lot of times when this type of compression takes place, there's a, there's a dent right along this bottom edge. Luckily, this does not have it. Slight bit of separation. See how that corner is different? See how that corner is pointed? This corner is smooth. Once more, this is a this is a, a shipping problem. There's a little dish there. You can see it. You can see that little dent. That's that's from this compression. You know, good packing pre prevents this kind of thing every time. Now, the first thing I always do is I look in here at this gasket, and this is the towel. That gasket is hard as a rock. Probably going to have to come out with a Dremel. 
uh, tool to get that one out. If that one's as hard, as hard, the rest of them are probably in similar shape. And that, loose. Very simple to, to solve that one. But see, we're just looking over, seeing what we have. Now, many of these machines, the suffer from over tightening. Um, and so this is a 30 millimeter socket and you just can't finger these off or use a little wrench. But 1976, now here's another little, I can see that in the reflection. See that little dish there? Yes. That's the, the that's the, that's inadequate shipping caused that right there. Likely the the seams of this top cap are a little separated as well. I like to, to work in one area, keep all of my tools and all of the parts handy. I have little containers that I put the parts as I disassemble in the containers. Okay, this is yeah, asbestos. Yeah. Here. Okay. Now, when you look at this, this is original paint, and I've seen a few orange ones lately. Okay, now you look down here. This is what we've got in front of us. There's that little lift. There's the sharp corner. That needs to be straightened. Likely, this bracket is pushed down as well. You see, it's not quite square. That is an old mark there, that little rust piece. These little marks are quite common to have happen. See, that's, a, that's an old scar, but needs a little touch-up. Classic uh, original paint job inside, by the way. You can see along this edge, this is the, they, they use an amazing primer. Very thick, void-filling primer. And then they don't do a lot of detail on the inside of the case. They do all of their work on the outside. That's that's early badge. Early badge, too. That's a very nice badge. And it's on straight. You can see we've got a little haze to take care of. All in all, for a 1976 machine, the original paint's in quite good condition. I very carefully set these things down here to deal with them later. Okay, I'm going to move around a little bit. So, you see here, on this asbestos covering, see this staining? Uh, this, when the machine is heated up, fired up, this will undoubtedly smell funny. It kind of smells like the dust that accumulates down in the cushions of an old couch. That's what it smells like. And we do have experience with cushions of an old couch. And it's loose as well. The way I tell this, then basically take a wooden object and it, it, it sounds a bit hollow. So this is all going to have to come off. And it sounds hollow because it's come loose it's, from the boiler it's itself. It's come loose from the boiler, and it's likely because it got wet up here on the top. But there's hollow spaces up here in the front, so this is just going to flake off as you, as you work with it. Now, so we'll look it over. Another thing we do is if this will move, it, when it will, you feel it's got about three... It's got one good catch, catchy jerk in it. And uh, this is tight as tight can be. So likely this machine has set and it's got a, a, a line of scale. It's got a rough spot in the cylinder. And then, and then that it, rough spot causes the catch? It, yeah, it causes, it's it, it just not smooth causes a little catch. So, we already know that we're going to need, interestingly enough, this is a 1976. This was a, this is a, you see this style steam wand um, fairly often in these older machines. It just has the screw and not the insert that, that goes through the top. So, I just kind of begin, you know, likely I Probably before I do anything else, let me look it over a little bit more. Now there's water in the sight glass. 
that is just stuck in there. There's no water in the... No? Nope. Alright, that indicates there's a big glob of scale down in the bottom. I'm glad the water didn't come out while it was being shipped. Yeah. Okay, you can look in with, you, with an inspection light. Once you get it in there, you can look in and it's just kind of black in there. I don't know if we'll be able to see anything. I don't see a tremendous amount of scale, per se. No, I can't see anything. It's just kind of grungy looking in there. But if that's full, there's a the channel that goes from the lower part of the sight glass. This channel has a glob of scale that's down in it. So, first thing that you would do, you say, okay, well, I descale it. Well, you already know you're going to change your seals. You already know you're going to have to remove the asbestos, so you're going to have to remove the entire boiler from the machine. But before we... To descale it, you're going to want to turn it on. Before we turn it on, probably the next thing you do, once you've looked over the case, you've decided, well, I need new seals. This, by the way, oddly enough, this dumb little wood screw this sheet metal screw is one of the hardest things to find the right size screw. So don't break it and lose it. Don't lose this screw. We've, if you try to drill this, because this is a threaded, this is a threaded hole. And so it's, it's a very, very specific screw. You can't go to the hardware store and get one. Get I don't know if it's metric or what. Okay, this is all in pretty good shape. Once again, we got a dent here, we got a dent here. Where did I put my parts there? We set this aside. Okay, let's look. And don't well, lose the little red button. Those are not available anymore. Oh boy. Okay. Well, that is resettable, so that's the right part. Boy, this is a real. Looks like that's, that's a real some trick. Melty bits with the the glitol's uh, gone. I mean, glitol's gone. Okay. What's the, what's the lettering say? Uh, 19 says uh, date code 74. Hmm. 1970. It is 76, isn't it? 7617. So it's 1976. Hmm. Must have had one laying around the shop there, eh? Maybe they let it age like a good wine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> what we want to do is let's check the electrical on this thing before we go to fire it up. You take your multi tester and set it on ohms. We should have a thousand watts. I go to the terminals and uh, 12.2. So treating 